Howdy. Um, I'm here to talk to you all about warehouse deployments. We've done hundreds of them, so I'm going to go over some of the common issues we see as well as the use cases and solutions for those issues. Uh, so the number one issue that we see a lot of the times is high ceilings. So a lot of these warehouses have anywhere between 10, 15 meter ceilings, um, even higher than that typically. Uh, so when you're using just the internal omnis that are in APs, a lot of times it's not um, directed enough to the ground to where it can actually reach at that distance. And I know Phil will probably fight me on that, so we'll talk later. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, so you typically have to use a sort of directional antenna to overcome that issue. Dynamic environments is another big one. It's great to plan <laughs> for a, a RF environment when it's static, but when you have moving inventory, things are bouncing around, you don't know where it's gonna be at all times, you have to kind of work around that and make sure that you're able to account for it. Lots of metal. There's typically always the metal racks, depending on what your inventory is. Um, it can make a big difference on if it's reflecting or being attenuated, so you always have to really look into what you're actually storing and how it's being stored on those racks. Co-channel interference is another big one, especially on 2.4. Um, you only have your three channels, and most of the scanners that you use in these warehouses use 2.4, so you really have to worry about that um, bleed over in between the aisles so that you don't have the overlap to where they're talking over each other. Yeah, signals not being reached to all areas of the warehouse. This kind of goes back to using the internal omnis. Um, it may reach around it, but it's not reaching all the way to the ground, so while you can still hear the omnis around you on the ceiling, you're not actually reaching to the ground. So you kind of have the worst of both worlds to where you're having the coach interference, but not reaching. So antennas don't have superpowers. They're not going to reach everywhere. <laughs> Mounting issues. Um, so it's great to have the right antenna, but if you can't put it to where you need it, then you don't really have the right antenna. So you kind of have to figure out what's the best mounting option for you, whether you're going to mount directly to the ceiling, if you're going to do a wall mount going down the aisle, or if you're using gaffer tape like Raymond showed and just duct taping it up there. That would also work. <laughs> Uh, and the last thing that's always very imperative to do in these situations is always to do a um, site survey or vindication of your um, modeling so that you can actually make sure that in your environment what you're seeing in your predictive is correct because real life is always different than what you're going to see in the predictive to some extent just because reflections are always changing in your environment. Uh, so now we're going to start going into some of our use cases. Um, so the main one that we'll be going over here is for a large pet food supplier, Chewy's. Um, they use a lot of our antennas and mounts. Um, and right here, we're going to go and look at the difference between 2.4 and 5 uh, in that dynamic environment to where your inventory is changing. So on the left here for both of them, you can see that that's your normal environment when you have full shelves, everything's great. Um, but on the right side, you see it when it has all the inventory removed. So now you're having more bleed over because it doesn't have the attenuation that you were expecting initially through that uh, inventory. And so now we're going to go ahead and get into the why not the omnis discussion. Um, so right here we have our typical, like, more true dipole omni. And now this isn't um, really respective to what you're going to see for an internal AP, because like Jim was showing, you have that down tilt on those omnis to where it's kind of folded in and you kind of get that butt shape that he was showing. Um, but this is more just the idea of just a true omni. And then on the bottom here you can see, um, for instance, this antenna actually. It has a very directed... Um, pattern that goes up and down the aisle. So it's very narrow, very um, wide on the vertical though, so that it stays all within that aisle so that you have very minimal bleed over um, into the adjacent aisles to reduce any co channel interference or any um, overtalk. So now we're going to kind of look at mostly the mounting options as well as comparing the um, omnis to the directional antennas. So we were saying earlier that you could use either the ceiling mounted in the direct middle of the aisle here on the right or a wall mounted on the left. Now the wall mounted on the left is a good solution. It does work, but you have a lot of issues to where if you get any obstructions, if you're moving a forklift through there, if you're moving bodies, um, those are gonna start attenuating the signal like crazy because you're just blocking the entirety of the aisle with it. So one in the aisle is gonna have a much worse signal than the other um, by nature. And then even when you get those obstructions, it's gonna increase that um, disparity between the two sides. So what we typically see now is that we're starting to do a lot of center mounted. So you put this on the ceiling, aiming straight down, face down. And what that does is it kind of negates any of that variability of what you're running through the aisles. So if there's a forklift obstruction or you're running around it, um, you're not going to attenuate the signal. It's going to be consistent throughout the whole aisle. And it also helps your client a little bit because it's going to be more consistent across the whole aisle and um, they don't have to work as hard um, at one end versus the other. 
In the middle here you can see just a typical Omni, and that's the Omni if you mounted it at the same height as these other antennas, um, because you need to be able to keep it away from the forklifts. You don't want it to get hit. You're always concerned about that. Um, and it obviously doesn't cover as much just because it's not designed to. It's designed to do a general area, not a directed up and down the aisle. Um, but obviously aisles aren't your only spaces in warehouses. Uh, you have these open palletized areas, either you're shipping and receiving or just palletized warehousing. Um, and in those areas, you can also use directional antennas if you're going straight from the ceiling. And this is kind of the area where it does depend if you want to use an Omni. You can get away with the Omnis a lot of times in these situations, either by mounting to the wall or if you have the option to drop them down, that does work. But it really just depends on how much you're moving through there and how you're going high with the forklifts, if you're going to be able to hit them or not. Um, so you have to look at your individual deployments to really decide uh, which option is best for you. Typically, just a general idea, we use the directionals because it's more consistent every time. You're not always going to have to be changing the level of the Omni per deployment. Thank you.